thanks everybody for joining us here today. I'm I'm excited because I love outdoor lighting. I think it's the greatest thing in the world. And, but but a lot of people really struggle in terms of how do I how do I start? And if I've already started, how do I up my game? And and really that's that's our our goal here for today is to talk about saying, look, I'm I'm starting with the picture on the left here. I've got a blank slate. I don't know what to do. How do I go from the left to the right? And, and our goal really is to hear to sh is to show you a handful of tools that are going to get you there. So, a little bit of quick background from us: uh, we are a part of FX Luminaire. We've been doing lighting for 30 years, and and not just the the lighting aspect from the the fixtures, the lights, the LEDs, but we're talking about the controls as well to make it a, a full and complete package. So we've we've done our homework. We've been doing this for a lot for a lot of years, and and our goal here is really to talk about three different things. Number one knowing what tools you have available to you. Number two, how to start designing. And number three, how to take it to the next level. And that's where and that's where Kyle is going to join in. So again, you've got Kyle um, Trotter and myself, Ryan Williams. Here's some, some pictures, as well as you've seen some video of me and, and Kyle as well. So let's get started here because we've got a lot to cover. Number one, Yes, we make controls and luminaires. Now, now the controls are not only the, the devices that power the lights because they are typically low voltage, 12 volt, but the, uh, those transformers that power the lights and turn, not only turn them on and off, but change the, uh, the colors, the intensity, uh, integrate with your various smart home systems as well as um, voice automated devices. So, so we've, we've got a lot here for you, but right now let's focus on really why we're here, which is to improve our outdoor living spaces. Now, over the last five years, I've really seen outdoor lighting change from just the landscape itself to the architecture of, of our homes and properties and spaces. And so because of that, that general movement, we do see new needs uh, associated with not only the controls, but, but the lights, the intensities, the colors, um, et cetera. So, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna run through our, our basic and key categories, why they're important and, and how we can implement them into our next designs. So number one, uplights. This is gonna be your most popular tool. Anywhere from 50 to 60% of any category of, of lights used outdoors is gonna fall within this category of uplights. You see these everywhere from lighting up trees to walls to accenting rocks. Now, the important thing about uplights is to remember a handful of things. Number one on trees, you do need at least two lights per tree. That's important because it creates this effect called cross lighting. If you have just one light, it creates a, just a very one dimensional or two dimensional and flat look. And we want to add depth within all of the um, branching structures and, and elements of the tree. Therefore, we always want to have two, and typically your, your beam spreads are a little bit more narrow, anywhere from, from 20 to, to 40 degrees or so. As we start spreading wider, you typically come up with a more wall wash look. This is the, the image that you see on the right. Um, in, in wall wash effects, your beam angles, what we call it, are going to be anywhere from 90 to 120 degrees. And your, 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 um, your purpose behind this wall washes is, is to add depth, to add um, dimension, and to add an, an end point to make your spaces feel, feel bigger and to add that, that final border. And lastly, you'll also find uplights adding uh, an element of what we call accent lighting, which is probably more common. That's the, uh, the image in the upper right-hand corner with the rock. Um, lighting, especially outdoors, is generally about, about um, accenting different features, bringing your attention to some areas and not others. And all in all, those three areas is really what describes the general tool of uplighting. Now, the second most popular category that we do have available for you is path lights. This is, this is probably the most visible lighting fixture that you'll find in your outdoor spaces. Now, now path lights, uh, most people think about the style. You know, is it a, does it have a sharp hat? Is it round? Is it, is it soft? What is that? How high is it? Most people are looking and thinking about that, but that's not what I want you to think about today. What I want you to think about path lights in terms of what they actually do. Now, we typically um, segregate path lights into three different categories. We call them area lights, directional lights, and marker lights. Now, area lights are really designed to provide 360 degree coverage, 
And this is that, that classic um, mushroom style path light that you see probably everywhere and have seen for, for decades. It's the most popular category. It does provide typically 360 degrees worth of coverage. Um, and, and, our, and our spacing is anywhere from, from eight feet to 15 feet, depending on height, hat style, intensity, and the nuances of the space itself. Now, there are many areas where I want light to go in a specific direction. I don't want any backlighting. I don't want any what we call light trespass in areas where the light shouldn't be. I want it in a specific direction. And that's why we call them directional lights or directional path lights. In this case, uh, you will find oftentimes a little bit more modern features and um, associated with the design of the fixtures. But again, it's designed to put the light exactly where I want it to be, whether it's for a very forward throw whether it's a short and very wide throw, um, directional lights is ha always has a specific purpose. Now, lastly, we do have marker lights as well. Marker lights is the, this image here on the right. This is where um, this, this, this fixture really violates the classic um, rule of thumb with landscape lighting. And that classic rule of thumb is the concept of, I want to see the effect of the light and not the source of the light. Therefore, in this case, we're, we're going to throw that rule book all out, out, of the, out of the picture here. Marker lights, I'm looking at the source. I kind of want to see the source. And in most cases, as it should be, the source of the light is diffused so well that it's not harmful to my eyes. It's, it doesn't cause a lot of what I call discomfort glare. You will find typically either a directional light or area light configuration in terms of where the light's going on the ground. Um, and, and some will do one direction, some will do the other direction. But, uh, but again, marker lights do offer that, that added piece of, um, of uh, looking at the fixture and seeing it itself. So, so that's really the path light configuration and, and what we're thinking about and what we're doing with our path lights. We can jump into the, the, uh, another category, which is wall lights. Wall lights are really designed to work with the architecture itself. That's, that's more commonly hardscape outside whether it's seat walls, whether it's steps, fire pits, um, the actual architecture of the house itself, um, stairs, there, there's so many aspects of where wall lights become important. Now, whether it's wall lights or path lights, in most cases, you're, you're trying to do two things. Number one, you're lighting up a pathway or area for safety. That's important. Um, you're also accenting the wall or architecture itself as that secondary piece. Now, we really, we've talked about lighting in three different, two different categories so far, accent lighting and, and, and task-oriented lighting um, for safety. Those are, those are really the two, uh, two of the primary prongs, prongs of, of, of lighting in general. When we talk about accent lighting, we talk about task-oriented lighting, and we talk about general ambient lighting, and we'll get that into the next category. But wall lights is really designed and comes into two primary categories. It's really surface mounted wall lights or recessed wall lights. Um, in most cases, this is really defined on when are you building the wall? Are you building or the architecture? Are you building, putting the lights in at the same time as the build or does it come after the fact? Now, in most cases, it is most ideal to build the wall, uh, build lights into the wall itself. Uh, that's why recessed lighting feels more natural. It flows better with the wall. It doesn't protrude as much, um, but it is harder to put install because you have to do it at the install installation time of the wall itself. If you do, and in most cases are coming back after the fact, we do have surface mounted options as well that are that are effective. Uh, create some long drills and some understanding on how to move that wire, put that wire right in the exact place, but. Uh, that, uh, that we have found many that have become very, very good at that technique, and you can too as well. So wall lights come in their own nuances. Again, most often we're trying to blend with the architecture of the wall itself, uh, and you can do that with a variety of different colors um, and form factors and installation methods. Now, moving on to our third, or sorry, fourth category, which is downlights. Now, downlights tend to be the least common installation uh, cat installed category. However, it's also the true sign of a skilled outdoor lighting designer. And so um, it does take longer to install these, these uh, fixtures because you are generally on ladders. Um, 
but if it also makes up for it because you oftentimes don't need as many fixtures when you are downlighting because of the height associated with the light. So you do find, again, multiple categories within this, or mo multiple subcategories within this category. Uh, this includes pendants, directionals, and surface mounted. These, these categories are sounding familiar now, aren't they? So from a pendant standpoint, this is when the light itself is, is typically just hanging. There's nothing securing it in a fixed position. We're letting it flow with the wind. We're letting it flow with the tree or um, other piece that it's installed with. You'll find many people just hanging it from the wire itself, as you can see in the image on the left. We do provide and have various cables and locks associated with, with helping that um, be an easy installation process. But pendants are really designed to get light exactly where you need it to be um, and to allow, as with all downlighting, the light to look very natural, whether it's associated with shadows from the tree itself, um, whether it's associated with a, more of a moon lighting effect. It's all about making the light feel natural but at the same time offering more ambient light more than anything else. So category number two, directional. Again, this is where we have a downlight where we want light in a specific direction going somewhere, and we need control over where the light is and where the light is not. And there's a variety of different um, glare control configurations and options and mounting configurations that help you get the light exactly where it needs, needs to be whether it is in a tree, whether it's mounted to the fascia board of the house, whether it's somewhere in the pergola, um, directional lights always, again, have a purpose. And, um, and most importantly, we're trying to hide that source of the light. Again, these are up in the air, and we do want to make sure that we can um, manage that glare more than anything else. Lastly, we do have the surface-mounted option. Now, surface-mounted downlights, this is what you might more commonly see more than anything else, especially in the, the outdoor lighting community. You will see these, um, these surface mounted downlights installed everywhere, whether it's to the actual side of the house, what we typically call those sconces, or to other any other um, piece around that outdoor living space. The goal here is to provide ambient lighting, um, to make sure things are um, the spaces are safe, and to provide an elegant atmosphere in which people want to be and are invited into. Now, let's go to our fourth category. In grades, or sorry, fifth grade, fifth, fifth category. In grades, sometimes called in grounds, sometimes called well lights. It depends on the style and the geographical location in which you're talking about. But you will find these lights that are installed to be below the grade. We're pushing the lights out of the way, out of the out of tripping and kicking hazards, as well as um, out of the out of the way of our light of our eyes itself from a glare control standpoint. And whether we are installing these things in in the grass or in turf, which is typically a big no no and a faux pas for lighting, but if you can get it below the turf level, then it then it really helps that that um, that installation. Uh, anytime that you have um, Areas where people are in ground or in grade fixtures are the way to go. It's also a very um, a nice technique and elegant way to add lighting to any space. Um, there are a variety of ways to keep these clean, a, ver a variety of installation methods to keep them dry. Uh, you do want to make sure that, um, that you um, are ready for this kind of installation because it, uh, just like down lights, it adds a certain nuance that just really helps the general feel. No matter what category that we're talking about, up lights, path lights, wall lights, down lights, and in grounds, you always have various options to play around with the photometrics. That's various levels of intensity, color temperature, and beam spread. Now, I do not want the intensity uh, uh, the same across any of my installations and designs. It, it looks flat, it looks boring. Your ability to, to in, increase the intensity in some areas while dropping the intensity of others really helps the space be highlighted in, in the way that the homeowner wants and needs. Color temperature is also another way to, to, to highlight those areas. Um, more often than not, the color temperature is the same across an entire installation, um, but when you start mixing and matching architecture or hardscape with softscape, meaning landscape, 
Um, oftentimes, cooler temperatures look a little bit nicer with hardscape. Warmer te- tones look better with landscape. Um, there are, and, and from a downlighting standpoint, very cool color temperatures look great um, because it does mimic the moon lighting effect. Um, there, there are lots of ways to play around with that, with that, the feel of the space. Again, whether it's intensity, color temperature, or the width of the beam, we call it beam spread. That goes back to that uplighting concept where we talked about um, more narrow um, stretches of light or beams for d- things that are going um, very high, very wide beam spreads for things that are very low or where we want to get more of that wall washing effect. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, no matter what category that I'm talking about, no matter the photometry that we're that we're paying attention to, we always have the ability to throw in an element of control. Now, that control can be color um, from a from an RGBW standpoint. That can be elements of general control of remote monitoring for my various homeowners that I that I manage. I can manage um, what what colors they're running, the themes, the intensities, um, and a variety of different things. It's very important to be able to have that remote monitoring options, um, that control capabilities, and the integration into various systems, whether it's your classic home automation systems, like you see here on the screen, Lutron, Control 4, Crestron, Savon, Elan, um, and others, as well as your, your classic um, homeowner-oriented systems, let's say like the, uh, the Amazon Alexa device or Echo devices. Now, here's the, here's the cool part. We've, we've talked about all these different categories that you have available to you. Now, what our main focus for here today is to say, here's your tools uh, that you have to work with. Now let's figure out how we can make those tools work for you, whether you're on the site or off the site or haven't even gotten to the site just yet. So we have this new tool called My Design. And again, just like I said in the beginning, our goal is to say, hey, I've got a blank canvas here on the left. How do I make it go to the right? And what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to walk you through um, a, a new tool that we have, have given you access to, um, which is called My Design. So on my screen right now, I believe you can see the homepage for FX Luminaire. Now, I'm already logged in. You can see that with my free account that I have access to as well as anybody because it is absolutely free and totally available to you. Now, I'm going to click here on the My Design um, link here right at the top, and I'm going to go to a new project. Okay, so I've got this already set up so we can go pretty fast here, but this is called my Sycamore Home. And at Sycamore, I've got a couple images that I literally showed up to the job site I took a handful of pictures here, um, both from the street, maybe one from the backyard, and uh, and maybe while I'm here, let's go ahead and, and add one more image. I'm gonna take a, a, a top-down view. I'm just gonna call it top view. I'm gonna hit save here. So I have a, a third area all associated with my Sycamore home or Sycamore project, okay? So now I'm gonna go back here. I have three areas within this home. So let's go ahead, let's go to, I'm gonna maybe start here with the backyard today. And in the backyard, here's my blank canvas. And, um, and you know what? Let's, uh, I'm gonna go back to the, the one where it's during the daylight because I think that might be a great way to start the day off. And so what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to um, grab all these, I'm gonna start from scratch. And so now I showed up to the job site, I took a picture and I'm gonna ask myself, what do I care about most here? And here I can see I've got steps going up here. I've got some landscape here. I don't have a lot of hardscape except for the architecture of the home, but I do want people to to know that this is where I'm heading. This is the primary direction. And uh, the homeowner also asked me that they wanted to make sure that they feel safe putting trash cans here along the side of the house here. So knowing that that is the, the primary purpose of the light here for today, I'm gonna say, okay, so I don't have a lot of areas to hide any down lights, so I'm gonna go some path lights. So let's pick some path lights here. I know what style I'm looking for. It's the name of the, it's called the, the PM. It's that bollard that you saw earlier today. 
I'm going to go for a, um, I want the, the zoning dimming option with Luxor, and that's that's a completely different um, topic that we're going to talk about and that Kyle's going to help us understand today. Um, I'm going to go for the extra tall version because I think it looks a little bit better. My finish is going to be the, the, the classic bronze finish. And now that I know what fixture I want to add, I'm going to start placing these here. So I'm going to put one here, and I'm going to go put these things side by side here. People tend to go every other in some cases. I think with the way the steps are here, I think side by side might work a little bit better. So now I've added um, three here. I could, I could actually keep on going if I'd like to, but I, I don't really feel like I need to. So I'm going to select all three of these and delete them. And now I feel like I've got, okay, I've got three path lights here. This is this is a good start. I do want to highlight some of these, these pygmy palms here. So let's go ahead and add a couple of up lights. But, you know, it is street level. I am coming home um, or, or coming down the steps at night too. I think I want to hide that glare a little bit better. So let's go with an ingrate. So in this case, I think I know which one I want already. It's going to be called the KG. Um, let's also go zoning dimming. I want a little bit more intensity just in, as these, these things tend to grow. And, um, and I'm going to match the same finish as the path light since they're going to be right next to each other. I'm going to add that to the area. So I'm going to add a couple right here in front of this pygmy. I'm going to add a couple more here in front of this one. And it's not a palm, pygmy back here, but I think for consistency, I'm going to throw two more back there too, just to add some more balance. And remember, my homeowner said she really cares about that one back there in the back. So we're going to add two there too. Perfect. So I'm going to hit escape now. I've now added um, a total of 14 fixtures. Looking great. I'm feeling great here. It's, it's kind of getting cluttered here for me. So I'm getting a little bit confused. So I think I want to select all of um, some of these um, in grades, and I'm going to change the color just so I know which ones are which. Okay, perfect. So I got these in grades as blue. I got these uh, the path lights as palm as orange. Um, let's. Oh, you know what? I need to change the colors here too. But you know what? Instead of that, I'd rather just take this one and I'm going to clone that one, that KG. So now I've just in a sense copied not only the skew itself, but the colors and some of the nuances that I'm setting up for it. So now I have still my 14 fixtures. I've got it categorized by color in grounds or up lights um, in blue, and I've got path lights in orange. Perfect. Now there's a couple little things that I might want to highlight here. Number one, I feel like the house is going to be very dark, especially this space right here. I care about making sure that this is well lit. So I am going to add a downlight under this little portion right here. And so uh, I'm not sure which downlight I want to use. No. So let's let's go to browse products real quick. I do know I want a soffit type light. So, oh, here it is. Soffit light. This is called an RC. I'm going to go 6 LED right on this one. Uh, I believe that stucco was kind of an almond color. So let's, let's do a more of an almond color. I'm going to stick that RC right about there. Perfect. Um, now, this is a different category, so I do want to, I'm going to change that color so I know which one's which. That's red. Now, remember, I do want to make sure that the focus is going towards the door. So in that, in this entryway here, I'm going to add more lights, but I'm going to put that in a different area because it's very hard to see um, where I'm putting those from this category. Now, I also feel like I need some light, more lights in the house. There are a couple sconces here. I do want to make sure that those sconces are matching the lights that I have here. So I'm going to go to a down light here. I'm going to go see if I can find a nice sconce that, that works well for me. So looks like I've got a, uh, here's, this is an up down sconce. That looks nice. This is a down only. I think I like the up down version. So let's go to our NL. I'm going to choose the up down version. I'm actually going to make, let's, let's play around. Let's make this one color changing at the same time. Uh, when I have the options of the fins of the cover for this site, I'm going to make the cover. Um, and I'm going to go a little bit natural. I'm going to go copper on this one. It's just it's next, next to the house. I want the house to feel natural. So I'm going to go these, these up-down um, NLs right here. And I'm going to add a couple more just to add a little bit more symmetry with the house because that, that makes me feel a little bit better. So now I've added those five NLs. I do want these to be a little bit different. Um, because they are going to be 120 volt, I do want to 
uh, make sure I uh, do the conversions and I do want to make sure that they look a little bit different here. So now I've got, uh, I'm going to make these also this, this purple color. Actually, uh, I think that was the wrong color. Let's, uh, let's change it here. So now I've got a, this, I've got a great lighting setup here and this took me about five minutes to put together. I've got 20 products. I've got five different fixtures in their various looks and feels. And I, I'm feeling pretty good about this right now. So I'm gonna go back to my other areas and I'm gonna say, okay, maybe um, I'm gonna jump to this, this backyard portion right here. Maybe this is the back of the house. This is not really the back of the house. We're just getting a few different geographies that we wanna pay attention to. So just to put a handful of things back here, at the, I, I do wanna make sure that I have, uh, and I'm planning for power. So let's make sure that I put on, I'm gonna use the Luxor in this case, just because I do have some color changing things. 300 volts, um, this is North America, so we're using, or 300 watts, this is North America, so I'm using the 120 volt version. Um, stainless steel is always a good place. And I know that I have receptacle down here and one back here. And for the pool house, there's probably one on the back side of this wall. Perfect. So lastly, before we, and then, and then as you already know how we can easily do, let's throw in a handful of wall lights. The wall light that I'm gonna put over here specifically, maybe it's gonna be that LF. Uh, we're gonna go that warm color temperature. Um, and then we're gonna do uh, some brass on this case here. So as you can see, I can't add it to the area, so I'm missing something. What am I missing? Oh, the intensity. So one LED, that's a two watt version. I'm gonna add that here. And then let's say maybe I can start putting these along the side of the wall here. And you can, again, you can just see how easy it is to, to make this work and to add these lights. And oh, maybe I wanted to change the color here. I'm just gonna make it purple so it stands out. And then at the same time, because I do have a Luxor, I, I do wanna make sure I'm tracking which groups I want associating with each of these fixtures with. So maybe these LFs are gonna be in group 10 and now I'm gonna have them here. Perfect. So let's go back for one, one final bit on my on my the front view here. Um, I, I For some reason, you know, I'm feeling like, you know what, this is getting a little bit too co uh, color oriented for me. It's it's too, too much color. I wanna change the way I'm thinking about this. I want this to be associated with how I'm installing the product, okay? So instead of category, I want to install this based on the wire run. So maybe all these fixtures are on one wire run here. Um, and maybe all these fixtures here are on their own wire run. Move on the right. So, and then this one is probably gonna be on the same wire run as the down lights, because it's all the 120 side. There, so now I have it just divided into three different sections, which might make it a little bit easier for me. So, as you can tell, and as you saw, we can change colors, we can, we can uh, change the group numbers. And um, one tidbit that is a, a, a power user feature right here, if there's a fixture that I, is my go-to, I can now mark that as my favorite. And so now that it's my favorite, if I want to add a product, I can go up to down to my uh, in-grounds and my favorite right here is already listed. So it's just a quick reminder that I can just grab that in-ground and start placing it in other areas, just like that. So definitely don't need these. So let's delete these again, just so, um, we have a cleaner view, and now I have a design that I'm that I'm pretty I feel good about, and that I'm pretty much ready for. So let's go back. Let's assume that I filled in, filled out, and populated the other areas. Now I know a handful of things. Number one, I know that I have 27 products or fixtures on the job. I have three transformers, which gives me a handful of, of 30 total products. I do know that I'm requiring a, a hundred and almost 200 watts for my VA total, which means that um, I need a, a solid number of transformers. Now I did spec three Luxor transformers. They were 300 volt watts each. Therefore I have plenty of, of, of room for my power consumption. Uh, but if I didn't, this would actually give me a flag and say, hey, you need to, you need to pay attention to something. So I do also know that the parts for me are going to cost my cost as a contractor is about almost $10,000. I know that because the system actually knows the list price and I put in my multiplier. So if I know that I'm buying my product at a 0.7 multiplier, 
I can input that 0.7 multiplier and that's how it gives me my cost. Now, in addition to that, I can also set up my proposal. So if I know for the homeowner, it's gonna cost me um, 10 grand, I know I'm probably gonna charge this homeowner, let's say I'm gonna cost, I'm gonna charge them 25K for, for all this light door, outdoor lighting. Whoops, not $25, 25K. So now I have all these different options that I can play with <clears throat> to, to update my system. So 25K is the system. Now I can have some great little share options here. So let's take a look at the PDF. I want to create a PDF that's customer focused, okay? If it's customer focused, I don't want them to see the indiv individual prices for each product. I don't want them to see the part numbers. I just want them to see my design, the layout, the images, and my final proposal. So I'm going to download that PDF. And what it's doing right now is it's generating a classic sell sheet that I can give to my homeowner, whether it's in person if I print it, whether it's in person by showing off my iPad this on the screen, or whether it's emailed to them with, with my contract. So here's the sheet that I have available. It's got the front view. It gives a quick summary. It says the proposal is $25,000. It shows the three areas that I'm doing. Um, and it shows area one. Here's the products that we're going to do. Here's some little bit specs on what the fixtures might look like um, and the quantity of each one. And my design is a professional lighting designer. I've got my area number two, which we did a very simple mock up here. And I did my area number three, which is top down view, which we didn't touch personally, but we would have if I wanted to move further here together. So that is my setup that I can give to Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner and say and show them that I know what I'm doing, that I have the tools associated with make, making it um, very um, obvious of my plan and what we intend to do. And in a sense, so the homeowner is aware of, of what this is gonna look like. Now, there were, now let's go back to the, some of these other options because I did have another option for sharing this. And this was uh, an installer options where I had a few different options. So now as an installer, this is my PDF. I want to know the list prices. I want to know the, um, the part numbers, because this is for my, my crew, and I want to download that PDF. Because this is going to be different. This is going to show the part numbers, so, all, so my crew knows exactly where to put everything. This is going to show even group numbers when we assign to group numbers. Okay, so, so now my crew knows that they want this KG ZD 9 LED, that's the full part number, um, in these areas right here that I marked, whether they were with um, colors, or in this case, whether they were with numbers, right? Now I know, now my crew knows that when they're installing the Luxor and they're signing all the lights and, and setting them up into their various scenes, now they know that these fixtures are all gonna be assigned to group 10 so that I have my as built when I can come back or when I'm doing some testing. So now I have two different export options from a PDF standpoint. I do have other options as well. I do have a URL that I can share, that I can send this to somebody. I can email this as well. Um, I can even, one, uh, one fun thing to do as well is to download it to ex and export it to Excel. So in this case of exporting it to Excel, this is the cool part because this is where I can start doing some of my calculations. Remember when we talked about, um, you know, my multiplier was a 0.7, that's what I'm buying off of list or my, what I'm uh, purchasing of list. I could do a few more calculations. Maybe my multiplier is not the same across all fixtures. I can tweak this and maybe say uh, this was, uh, maybe I paid a little bit more for this one. And this will give me my final, final bill of materials more than anything else. So you have lots of tools associated with your design, not only with creating the design, but exporting the design and sharing it with your local distributor as well. So from a, um, as, as you know, some of these part numbers, like we saw here, um, th there's a, a handful of configurations that I wanna make sure I get it right. And if I wanna make sure I get the part number right, using a tool like this is the best way to make sure that I can um, get the part numbers right and to make it a lot easier for my distributor as well. So let's, um, let's take a look at my final project here. So. I call this my Sycamore home. I have so many different options here for this project, but this is just one project. I can add another project for the neighbors down the street, and another project for the, the house that I just did last week, 
and I can fill my design full of all the projects that I have so that when I need to come back because the homeowner says, hey, can we add more fixtures over here? You can easily say from home without going on site, you know what? Uh, we're utilizing 200 watts, but I put a 300 watt transform on the system. Yes, we've got more power. And based on where you want to put this, I can easily put another fixture over here. Um, homeowner says, hey, there's a problem with one of the lights. Something, something needs to get fixed, replaced. I don't need to go to the job site to find out what it is. I know that when I go find Mr. and Mrs. Mr. And Mrs. Smith's home on Sycamore, I know that that area that they're talking about, that fixture was a KGZD9LEDBZ. Perfect. I know what, what the intensity is. I know the replacement parts. I can save myself a visit. This is a fantastic tool, extremely powerful to not only help in the design aspect, to not only help in the selling aspect, but to help in the, the maintenance side as well. It's all free. It's act, you have access to um, to every feature that I showed you, and in the in the near in the near future, many more features to come. This there's a this is an exciting platform where you will continue to see a lot more to come. So with that, I'm going to go back to our primary slide and screens. Okay, and let's go to uh, a handful of things that. Um, we might need to go to here. So we've talked about here. So before I leave that one topic, remember you have access to it. It's a free tool. Feel free to take a snapshot with your phone for the QR code on the, on the, on the, on the screen here. But remember, it's just on the website, my designs right at the top at the utility bar and um, create your free account and, and get going because this is a fantastic opportunity. So with that, I want to make sure of two things. Double check to see if there are any questions. And I do see that there, we do have questions asking, does the design tool also have the ability to show how the lighting will look like once the lights are turned on? Now, uh, that is a fantastic question because honestly, that was what I was alluding to when I said more fantastic features to come. So we are actively working on that tool. And uh, I believe that you will have that soon. But um but again, this, this tool is designed to help you design and to help you sell. And we are very much aware of the, if the homeowner can see exactly what it's going to render to look like, then that helps you even more to sell the job. So thank you again for that question here. So with that, let's go ahead and jump. So uh, um, I think I finished my portion. So we've talked about all the categories that we're playing with, and we talked about the new My Design tool. Those are those are two resources that you have available to make you a successful lighting designer and installer. So with this, I'm gonna turn the time back over to Kyle really quickly, and he's gonna run through some of the more educational options that you have access to as well. So Kyle, go ahead. I think you're gonna turn your camera on and, and we'll uh, let's transition this over. Thanks, Ryan, great job. I think uh, Ryan gave you the what I'm going to give you the how and what I mean by that is how do I get started? We can't teach you to be a, an expert lighting designer in a 45 minute class. So we want to give you the tools to start uh, your designing career. Um, and two of them we're going to talk about today is the FX uh, lighting design course and the FX Luxor controller course, two courses that we'll go through today. Um, up on the screen, I have uh, six of the designer courses. And to me, 25 years in doing this training is, is so essential to become successful in the lighting business. I believe knowledge is power. No matter what industry you're in, the more training you have, the more confidence you'll have to sell the product. One of my favorite sayings is training breeds knowledge, knowledge breeds confidence, and confidence breeds results or success. We have several tools to help you with your training. Two of the courses we're going to talk about today the first one, the lighter, lighting designer course. We talk about up lighting. We'll talk about down lighting, lighting pathways, hardscapes, which will include stairs, pergolas, um, arbors. Light, uh, Ryan touched a little bit on how to light trees. We need two lights. It's all in these courses. Um, lighting stairs. Click over to the next one. Perimeter lighting. Uh, specialty features like water fountains, outdoor kitchens, 
Um, and then finally, fire pits and, and water features. Ryan talked about a lot about my design. Um, it's a great tool, but you're going to need to go through these courses and, instead of just putting fixtures on a page. Every fixture needs to have sense and purpose. So I think going through the designer course will give each fixture sense and purpose of where it needs to go. And then the next course is the Luxor Specialist Training Module. This course will help you become familiar with everything Luxor. Includes nine training modules and videos to help you become a Luxor specialist. Um, it helps you understand how to set up the controller with all of its features, benefits of zoning, dimming, and color. Ryan touched a little bit on that. Once you go through this course, you understand how to work that. Um, having training and the confidence to sell the most, to me, the most advanced lighting system on the market with the zoning, dimming, color versus your competition. What your competition sells is all lights on, all lights off. You're going to learn how to zone dim and add color to every single uh, project you have. Um, and finally, if you we partnered with Snap One to give you $50 off your next 300 watt Luxor controller purchase. Um, if you complete both courses, you will get a coupon code to get that $50 off of your Luxor controller through Snap One only. They stepped up and, and wanted to be a part of this training, so we allowed that. Um, all you need to do is complete both courses and you receive the coupon code. I know this has been a ton of information um, in a short time. FX has many factory salespeople across the country. We have tech support. We have customer service to support all your lighting needs. Feel free to reach out to any of us on this call or go to FXL.com to find more information. Um, I know we have to wrap this up. So Greg, final thoughts and to direct people to the VEC for more questions. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. And great job, both of you, Ryan and Kyle. Uh, wonderful presentation. I did want to answer a couple little questions real quick since we do have some time. It's six, it's, uh, uh, we got 15 minutes, so we'll wrap this up shortly. But I did want to answer a few questions. Um, Moises asked, uh, do we have any do we offer any design services that for people that don't have much design uh, experience for the lighting industry? And Kyle did touch on that just moments ago with the lighting designer. Uh, there are a few courses on Hunter University, so that's training.hunterindustries.com, where you'll complete a couple of things today, uh, as well as this presentation that will get you access to that awesome hat that we're offering up. Uh, did you want to add anything to that, Ryan or Kyle, on the educational standpoint, or yeah? More if, if you need help design on design, I think a, if you need help on design, we have eighty Hunter FX factory salespeople across the country. We can direct you uh, to any of those folks that can help you with your design. I, I see a question: Do you have design service? Um, every one of our people can help you with design on any of your projects. I hope that answers your question. I think that's good. Um, how do you offer the, or how do you get access to the training? So you'll access these trainings, the lighting designer and the Luxor controller specialist at training.hunterindustries.com. And it will be under the lighting tab at the top of the screen. Ryan, did you still have the uh, website open? Uh, I do. Do you want me to pull it up? Why don't you do a quick screen share and just show them exactly where that's at? You bet. Let's go. Okay, so you can see my screen now, right, Greg? Yes, I can. All right, so here's fxl.com. We've got training right here at the top. So I'm going to click on training. And here's going to take me to all these, these training options from the lighting pers um, perspective, okay? So lighting designer, lighting technician, and a variety of different training options. So I can click on here. This is gonna take you to our training portal. Um, and then here is where you can access a number of different lighting certificates and lighting options from lighting technician, Luxor specialist, as well as a lighting designer option. Fantastic. We had a There's few questions great... about accessing a recording to this session. And yes, there is access to this. Use the same link that you use to join today's live session. Uh, it takes about an hour for the 
webinar recording to process from this session. So uh, give it an hour, go grab a cup of coffee, come on back after lunch, and then you can watch the recording of this session. And if you wanna send it to a friend, by all means, please send them a link to register for it. And that same link that you used to join today will work for them to register and watch the recorded event as well. Um, there was a question here. Do you have distribution in Mexico? I'll let you guys yeah. take that one. Yeah, so Greg, I'll jump on that real quick. And again, let me uh, again let me share my screen again. So this might help uh, not only on the question of Mexico, but in other areas. But so, uh, Greg, just to confirm, you can see, see my screen again, right? Yes, sir. All right, so uh, we've talked about here at the top we've, on the utility bar, my design, my list, support, training, uh, this is where you can change languages as well. We also have GetFX. And GetFX allows you to, for homeowners, allows you to, to find a, a, a local contractor that, that, is, uh, that commonly installs FX Luminaire. Um, from a professional standpoint, you can look up distribution, right? Uh, this is going to help you find a certain location and, and, and an authorized dis distributor where in your local region. So I'm going to click on find a certain location and when that pulls up, you can see my list of authorized distributors is not just in North America, okay? So let's click on here. Let's go over here in Mexico, and I can see in a variety of places in Mexico, I've got, whether it's in Baja, whether it's in Monterey, I've got a very, a, quite a few options for you here so we can easily just click here in mexico and hit search and in mexico i have a number of different options available to you okay so that answers the question on how to find a local distributor but also at the same time um, kyle mentioned the the salesforce that um, you have access to you do have uh, another option in terms of how to contact a local sales manager and here's a, a, a great tool in order to do that as well so um, we've got a variety of, of tools and a variety of people to help you. So um, feel free to lean on that and utilize that because we do have the largest sales force for landscape lighting in our in our in North America by far. Ryan, there's another great question um, from Edwin. Can you control lights independently if they are connected on the same line? Oh, absolutely, and that's that's the fun question, and that's one of the reasons why we want you to take the uh, the Luxor Control um, Specialist program. So, because that is the true value of Luxor is its its two wire and power line communication um, capabilities. With uh, with that power line communication, now you can change the in, the on off times independently, even if it's on the same line. You can change the intensity on the same line as well as colors. And so, and so that that fundamental architecture of power line communication really um, helps do exactly what you want to do, and it really helps, um, especially those who are new to landscape lighting. It really helps you understand and learn about lighting because you can say, okay, you know, this one needs to go a little bit lower, this one needs to go a little bit higher, and planning some of that stuff out is pretty hard to do. And especially with the uh, typical buckets of intensities that you're offered, you know, at, at FX, we typically call them, you know, one LED, three LED, six LED, nine LED. But within those four different buckets, there's a lot of gap in between. And so, and so sometimes you, you can't just force landscape or architecture to fit in your standard four buckets. And so that's why the ability to, to change the intensity really helps fine tune the design and really helps you learn, especially if you're in here to, to learn to and to elevate your, your lighting game. So that is a long answer to say, yes, you can control the fixtures independently over the standard two wire system. Very well said, Ryan. Uh, we did have a question here from Michael that said, can you confirm that the Luxor Transformer has an ethernet connection out of the box? Uh, answer is absolutely. So, um, so that the Ethernet connection is tech, we'll call it a free free upgrade. It's it, it's in, in the back um, the of the face plate or the face the panel itself. Um, if you do want uh, the Wi-Fi connection, there is an access. You have to, you do have to um, purchase that that antenna separately. But 
Ethernet is free and right out of the box. Fantastic. Hey, thank you so much, Ryan and Kyle. You guys did a fantastic job. Thanks, we did Greg. Have a, a quick mention about the AV integrator specialist that will be coming out as another additional training on the Hunter University website. So please look for that. Uh, for this presentation, we just want you to go check out the lighting designer and the FX controller specialist. But with that, thank you for joining us for Integrate and Elevate. Uh, this presentation has been fun. It's great to hear Ryan and, and Kyle go and, and talk about some of these things with the passion that they have on it. I hope you found this illuminating and definitely worthwhile uh, Consider add, to consider adding lighting to your product offering. If you've not done lighting before, maybe Maybe it's something that you want to start looking at bringing into your business. So we'll ship you your FX Luminaire hat to a dress that you registered with it. So whatever address that you put into the registration when you join this session is where we'll ship the hat. If you didn't give us an address, we have no place to send it to. So please uh, reach out to us with your information if you forgot to put that into the registration. Uh, for access to even more lighting design content, you'll be redirected to our Virtual Engagement Center, or VEC. If you've not gone there before, this is really awesome. This is a virtual center that you can go in and explore some of the content that we have for Hunter Industries and FX Luminaire, and we really highly uh, recommend going there. After the presentation ends, you'll be redirected to that site, so feel free. Uh, if you've already registered and signed up for an, a free account to access the AV Integrator Lighting Specialist Certificate, you can use the same login information to explore the VEC. So this is uh, your Hunter account. And if you don't have one, you can also visit sso.hunterindustries.com to create yours or just click join now on the screen when you get the pop-up. If you need help, staff will be available in the Connections Meeting Lounge for about an hour following this presentation. So be sure to check out uh, the Tour Guides tab uh, to the left side of the screen at the VEC site entrance. So as soon as you get in on the left side, there's a Tour Guides tab that'll tell you about the VEC and how to navigate it. Uh, when you complete the lighting designer tasks listed, you'll win a one-of-a-kind game changer hat. So if we have your address, that's where we're gonna send it to. We appreciate your time and look forward to helping you achieve your AV Integrator Lighting Specialist Certificate. Thank you guys so much and have a fantastic day.